Welcome to Rocket ATM Tutorials. We do provide processing services, so please feel free to give us a call to get connected. This video is going to demonstrate how to set up an ATM machine, a Hyosung ATM machine, uh, from the ground up as if it came from the manufacturer. It's a step by step guide. Before we get started, please do contact our office for all processing needs and don't forget to click on the subscribe button down below and hit the bell icon to be notified of all of our future video updates. So from the boot up screen, here we go. You wanna press enter, clear, cancel, one, two, three. Give it a second and we'll have this out of service screen come up. You may already have this screen come up, that's great. If you do, you wanna enter into the operator function. and entering a password. We're gonna type in password 555555. And up comes the menu. Basically, we're gonna start programming uh, some of these menus. Uh, we're gonna dive into each one and come back out. And uh, that's how we're gonna uh, basically set the format of this video. I'm gonna start off with customer service. And <clears throat> very first thing I want you to do is go into surcharge mode and uh, set the amount of what the ATM is going to charge your customer. So let's just say 250 is what we're going to charge and go ahead and hit OK. Operation successful. The owner, let's change the owner. I'm going to go ahead and hit clear all and we're going to type in Rocket ATM. So there's a couple of different menus. Here's our menu selection. This is obviously uh, numbers, uh, numeric values here. I want to go to the alphabets. <clears throat> so once I have the alphabets on the screen, using my keypad, I'm going to highlight what I want to type. I want to type Rocket ATM as the surcharge owner. So I've pressed 77. And as you can see, I'm highlighting R. If I hit enter, I get the R registered up on the top line. So Rocket R. O, enter, C, enter, K, enter, E, T, rocket, and then space. I'm just going to hit the plus button. To There's a plus and minus button here. You can move the cursor back and forth. forth. So rocket, A, enter, T, enter, M, enter. So we got rocket ATM. That's what I want. Hit OK. And that's our surcharge mode. I'm going to go ahead and hit Cancel from there. Hmm, my keypad is jammed up. There we go. All right, so once we have the surcharge mode going, I want to go into Select Processor. In Select Processor, let's go to Communication, and we want it to be on TCP IP. If you don't have an internet connection and you want it to put it on dial-up, you'll have to hit dial-up and whatever's in the center of your screen is what the setting is. So I actually want TCP IP because I want this to be on the internet. So TCI, TCP IP, and that's fine. Go ahead and hit cancel from there. Uh, let's go to message format. And I actually want it to be on standard one. So that's where it needs to be. If some processors or if we uh, advise you to put it on standard three, then that would be just press standard three, but we want it to be on standard one. So I'm just going to leave it on standard one and hit cancel from there. And I want to go to TCP IP type. In TCP IP type, uh, I want to hit standard. Uh, here, are the, here are the menu settings uh, that we have to program. Uh, the type I actually want to be on standard. I am programming this to be on uh, a processor called Columbus Data. So this is what we're gonna program. So standard, and then the SSL TLS version uh, is gonna be enabled. The, the SSL TLS, I'm sorry, the SSL uh, format needs to be enabled. The SSL TLS version, which is right over here, I want it to be 1.2, so I hit that twice, up to TLS version 1.2. And the SSL TLS certificate is disabled. There we go. I want it to be disabled. I need it to say standard, enabled, 
up to 1.2 and disabled. That's what we want it to be. Once you have that setting, go ahead and hit cancel from there and cancel again. Now I want to go into standard one options. In standard one options, I want to enable my status. There is enable. I want to enable my host error and I want to leave the reversal a reason for reversal as disabled. Then I want to go into extended functions. So we have enable, enable, disable. That's perfect. Going into extended functions, I want to enable my dynamic flow. <clears throat> I want to disable my first call. So enable dynamic flow, disable the first call. I want to enable my currency conversion. And we're going to leave it at host DET there. That's fine and it's popped open a menu here for currency conversion options. I wanna go ahead and enter that menu. Now, I want the option to be one, two, I want it to say CDS, so I've hit that option button. You can go through a few different options here. Uh, I want it to say CDS. So once I have CDS, that's great. And my local surcharge, I wanna enable that and uh, the DCC type should say both, right? There are a few different options here, but I want it to see both for Visa and MasterCard, so both. Once I have CDS, enable, and both, that's perfect. Let's go ahead and hit cancel, cancel, cancel. And we're back out to this customer setup menu where we started and we've done the surcharge mode, we've done standard one options, we've also done the select processor uh, menus. Let's go to optional function one. In optional function one, I want you to go into EMV. And in EMV, very, very important, we wanna make sure our EMV is enabled. And the kernel version, I like it to be up to 6.0 if possible. And you need to enable all of your functionalities here for language selection, which is currently disabled. Let's go ahead and enable that, that's great. And Everything else is uh, as, at default and that's perfectly fine. Let's go into the AID list and make sure that all of our AID lists are enabled. In this case, we're highlighting in light blue here, number one, uh, and it says disabled. So I wanna hit the AID enable disable button. And there we go, we've enabled that one. If any other ones are disabled you can hit the next AID and you can see how the highlighter keeps going up and down whatever is disabled just go in highlight it and enable it so everything's enabled here let's go to the next list everything seems to be enabled here <clears throat> there's a couple of them disabled here I'm gonna go ahead and Enable that, and enable that, and that's it. Everything is enabled. Let's go out to the previous list, and yep, we're all good here. So go ahead and hit cancel, and we're good there. Hit cancel again from the EMV menu. We're back out to optional function one, <clears throat> customer setup where we started and hit cancel one more time. So here we are back out to the operation program screen. So we've now concluded jumping in and out of the customer setup menu, which is done. Let's go to system setup. And in system setup, let's double check if we have a serial number in here. It's all zeros. So clear all. If you already have a serial number in here, that's great. If you don't, if you open your top door, and look inside, your serial number is located right over here. In this case, it's something like seven to a Y, uh, it's kind of hard to read there, but that's your serial number and you want to type that in. <clears throat> so again, using your alpha menu uh, or numeric menu, there's three menus to choose from. There's alphabets, which here's the alpha. If you need tables and symbols, you can choose over here, which you have some alphabets on as well. Or you can go into numbers and just highlight a desired number. 
like seven, enter, and then two, enter. It was seven, two, two, you know, whatever it was, zero, 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 one, two, three. And so you have basically a 10 digit code. Once you enter in those, that sequence, you're done. Press okay. I'm just pretending like that's the serial number, but okay, good. Let's check out our date and time. So it's pretty straightforward. Your, your current setting is what the computer is reading right here. If your anything is off, you wanna go and fix it. It's the year 2020, perfect. Month, April, day 17, hour. Let's go into hour. And it's noon. So I'm gonna put 12 and it is 12, 15. There we go. And now I have that and hit apply. Okay, so it's 12, 15 and we're good to go. Hit cancel from there. We don't need to touch anything else here right now. So go ahead and hit cancel again. Well, we can check out our languages actually. If we want various languages enabled, uh, by default, English and Spanish are generally always on. <clears throat> In some environments, you may want French, Chinese, Korean, Japanese. It's, it's there if you want to enable them, that's fine. Go ahead and cancel from there. I'm going to leave it to where it is. And we are in system setup. We're done here. We're done. Go ahead and hit cancel from here. <clears throat> We're back out to the main operation program menu. Now I'm going to dive into host setup. Host setup. Let's go ahead and begin straight in with the terminal ID. Please contact us for your terminal number. If you've been provided your terminal number, let's go ahead and enter it in here. I'm going to pretend like we have a terminal number. So whatever is here, zero, 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 let's go ahead and clear all. And, and the terminal number that I got is <clears throat> N H and go to table number one, zero, one, zero, two, zero. If that's your terminal number you were given, which this is just a dummy number, but as you can see, I've populated the terminal number that I need to enter. Once I have my desired number and alphanumeric, whatever the case may be, press OK and it's saved. And now we're gonna go into routing ID in routing ID, I'm gonna go ahead and hit clear all. And let's go to the alpha menu. The routing ID for Columbus data on a standard one configuration is CDHY. So got my alpha menu, C, enter, D, enter, H, enter, and Y. There we go, got it highlighted, press enter, C-D-H-Y. That's what I wanted to say, and hit okay. All right, so we've done our terminal number, we've done our routing ID, great. Let's go to host setup, or host address, I'm sorry. <clears throat> We're already in host setup, host address. All righty, very first thing, we can see our URL for communications is disabled, so I wanna make sure that that is enabled in all circumstances. <clears throat> for address number one, two, and our port number one and two, let's begin here. Address number one, I'm going to program our communication address, which is basically a website address. It's going to say atm.columbusdata.net. That's what we need it to say. So going to my alphabets again, atm, a, enter, t, enter, m, enter. I got ATM, I need a dot. So for a dot, I'm gonna to go to table and then number. And there's a dot right there underneath number four. So four, 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 there's my dot. Hit enter. All right, so I got ATM dot and go back to my alphabets, columbusdata.net. So ATM dot columbusdata.net. 
So Columbus. So C O L C O L U M. Oops. Come on now. The keypad is. There we go. Kind of sensitive. C O L U M B U S ATM dot Columbus data data D A T A nice and easy ATM dot Columbus data dot I need a dot so go back to table go back to number and well there's my dot already so I'll just hit enter go back to alphabets dot net I want it to say so <clears throat> N <clears throat> E T okay ATM dot Columbus data dot net I've said it multiple times because it's so important that the spelling and everything is correct even one dot or comma off and you're gone to a different website and the ATM will never work so once we have what we needed to say hit OK and you'll realize that both address 1 and 2 automatically got populated we were programming address 1 and that's great we want to go ahead and hit address 2 if address 2 is saying something else you can jump into address 2 and hit clear all and make sure it says atm.columbusdata.net. In this case, it's already there, so I'm just gonna hit cancel, and we're there. Port number one and two. So I'm gonna go to port number one. I want it to be 6965, enter. All right, both ad uh, port numbers one and two, I want it to say 6965, and number two automatically populated, which is great. <clears throat> Again, if this was to say something else, you can go into port number two and just change it to 6965. All right, so enable atmcolumbusdata.net. Uh, everything here as we discussed, that's looking perfect. Go ahead and hit cancel. All righty, so we've got that. We're back into host setup. Um, the last step of uh, a setup process <clears throat> is going into key management. That's an entirely separate video in itself. Uh, you want to contact our office for uh, key management and uh, terminal activation, but uh, we'll get you that uh, information when you set up an account. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and hit cancel from there. Go ahead and, and hit <clears throat> cancel one more time. One final thing is uh, for programming is also your name and address on your receipts. So when a customer does operate and use your ATM machine, we want the name to show up on the receipt when it comes out. So basically from the operation program main menu where we started from, going into customer setup and going into change messages is where we can program our welcome message and also our receipt messaging here. So welcome message, there's three lines. You can have it say, welcome to Rocket Quick Mart or whatever the store may be. And again, you're using your alpha menus to type in welcome. And you're using the up and down arrow to go to the next line. You can go back up to the first line. There we go. You can go down to the next line if you needed to. Using the minus and plus button, you can use to scroll around to make sure things are aligned up how you need them to be. Whatever you're doing to program, uh, go ahead and, and press the OK button to save it. So I'm not going to bother programming anything right now. I think it's pretty self-explanatory, but you can use your navigation menus from alpha, table, and number, and using your plus and minus button to scroll over and space yourself out accordingly to type whatever you want. Press OK when you're done. And once you're done your welcome message, again, you're going to do the same thing with the receipt header. You have a couple of things. Rocket Quick Mart, uh, maybe the address over there if you want, or a phone number. There's only two lines there. You have a, a, well, here's an address and phone number menu here for your receipts. They give you four lines. You can have your first name there, Rocket Quick Mart, 123 Main Street, uh, Atlanta, Georgia, 30011, whatever. 
and maybe the fourth line could be your phone number, whatever you needed to say. It's pretty self-explanatory to, to use your navigation menus to program what you need to. And whenever you're done, don't forget to press OK to save it. In this case, I just saved something blank. The tail, receipt tail could be, thank you, come again. Sure, no problem. You don't need to even program anything there if you don't want, but that's what a tail message says. So again, don't forget to press OK when you're done. And that's how you program your messages. I'm hitting cancel, cancel, back out to the main menu. <clears throat> Once you are satisfied with that, the final steps, of course, is to load cache <clears throat> and get your uh, key management uh, master keys uh, entered for encryption, uh, which is a technical process. Like I said, it's a separate video. Do give us a call to further the setup. Thanks for watching. We do provide processing services, so please feel free to give us a call to get connected. Don't forget to subscribe down below and hit the bell icon to get notified when we post our latest videos.